A lot of people think because we use wheelchairs, we can't use our legs at all. But not every wheelchair user is completely paralyzed. Some of us can even walk. So today, I'm here with my friend Maria, and we're gonna teach you some at-home workouts that you can do as an incomplete, low-level spinal cord injury. I'm here with Maria, who's one of the Rolettes. For those at home that don't know, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a member of the Rolettes dance team. I joined in the beginning when it started in 2012, and I am currently studying to become a certified personal trainer. Being a low-level incomplete spinal cord injury comes with its own unique differences and challenges. What are some of the daily differences and challenges that you face? I definitely deal with a whole lot more of chronic pain, and I get messages from people in my DMs calling me a faker because they think I don't actually need this chair. Yeah, I think aside from chronic pain, the stigma around being paralyzed but not paralyzed at the same time is very confusing and very complicated for people that don't understand. And I know for me, that is quite literally one of my biggest frustrations, and even to the point where I was incredibly insecure, I used to kind of hide my abilities in fear of judgment. I'd be at the grocery store and be like, oh, there's something on that shelf. I could probably stand up and grab it, but honestly, I don't want to do that because I don't want to be a, a, a sideshow, a circus freak or anything like that. I used to be just like you and like hide my leg movement. I would be on an airport and sometimes they would have to like climb over my lap and I would just try so hard not to move my legs, even though I knew it would be easier because I didn't want to be called a faker. How did you start experimenting with, with ways to do your own kind of rehab at home? At the start of 2017 I had been through enough I had a bad depression I was gaining weight and I didn't realize that I was gaining weight I was really unhappy with my life I realized I was happiest when I was more active and I was you know with the team doing dances and going all over the place but when I was at home I would sit at home and do nothing so I decided to try to work out and get a little bit more active maybe get a little bit stronger see where I could get with my leg strength I joined a fitness challenge online that was completely free and they had us do squat jumps and you know, <laughs> can't that, that really whole be thing. doing those. That whole thing. And I was venting with my friend about that, and he's like, Well, why don't you just try squats while holding on to something? And I was a little annoyed that I didn't think about it myself, so I decided to give it a try. I had my husband with me right there to just kind of make sure that I don't fall and hurt myself, but it was the most terrifying thing in the world. I could not do a full squat, but it did ignite a fire in me to start focusing on the things that I could do in instead of the things I couldn't do. And I've been able to figure out things from there, play around with a few other ideas. So this is going to be my version of a squat while hanging on to a bench. Um, you can pretty much hang on to any kind of ledge that you want. We just happen to use this bench because this is what's available. I personally would like something a little bit taller, maybe like railing, but this definitely works. So what I like to do is just kind of get my feet about shoulder width apart and um, then I'll stand and get myself to where my feet are kind of in the same place as my knees and same place as my hips. And what's really cool is you don't have to take a deep squat where your butt goes all the way to the ground. Like a very simple movement, even something like this, is still going to add tension to your quads and your hamstrings and, and your glutes. And I think that's even how you got started, was just doing little baby squats. When I go down, my hips like to twist the, the wrong direction because I got a really big quad over here and a really tiny one over here. So I'll pull with this and then I'll push with this one. So as I'm going down, I'm pulling and kind of pushing until I reach my lowest point. And if I can't get back up, I'll just lean forward and kind of push myself with my arms at the same time. So I like to do these spots as well, but sometimes I go in head first instead of at an angle, just because it's a little easier for me to stand up that way. But I line up my feet shoulder width apart and stand up, and then I unlock my chair while using the bench for support, and I push my chair out of the way where I can still reach it, but that way it doesn't get in the way of the squats. Then I readjust if needed, and I just kind of squat as low as I feel comfortable and safe, and then pull myself back up. The next variant of squat we're gonna do is something called a kneeling squat. So if you don't have um, all of your balance available and you do have some like quads and glutes and hamstrings that maybe your maybe your knees are really weak or really unstable um, you can actually um, put yourself in front of the, the bench on your knees 
and, and what you'll do is you'll drop your butt back to your heels. Sometimes it's really nice to have um, like a foam roller around your ankles or like a pillow or a blanket, something to keep it kind of from wobbling around. I'm lucky enough to have this kind of stable, so I'll hang onto the bench and I'll, I'll get my way down as far as I can go and then pop myself back up. my knees unlike this guy over here so I'm gonna do it on the grass where it's a little bit more cushiony I like to get down onto the floor and roll on over to my knees and since I don't have a bench I can use the back of my chair put your locks on so that way it doesn't roll around and do the same thing you got way better I'm gonna hop in my chair but if you want to see a floor transfer video click right over here Cheater, Bam. you're a faker. That was way too easy for you. No fair. You're not really paralyzed. You just haven't put enough time and effort and energy. You don't have perseverance or self-discipline. I'll pray for you. Okay? I'll pray for you. All right, well, I'll, I'll, pray, I'll, pray, for I'll pray for you too. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for I'll you. Pray for you. <laughs> I hope you don't get a disability check. I hope you don't get to park in the nice parking or pee in the big bathrooms, you faker. So next we are going to do glute bridges. I cannot uh, dig my toes into the floor, so I will be holding onto my shoes with the heels. So my glute bridges are a little bit different. I've got a little bit different level of abilities, so I can actually drive my, my heels into the ground. But since my upper torso is kind of thicker, I use my elbows to drive. So I'll press my elbows in, and I'll use that to press up. She's on like rep 20 over there. Jam. So we're gonna just stay in this position after we've completed our glute bridges and work on some core stuff. So I like to leave my legs kind of up in that bent position and then reach my hands back like so. And I call these the dead bugs. So whenever I reach up, I'm going to cross and try to touch that knee. I'm gonna leave my head off the ground a little bit and just touch this knee. And that's a really good way to get that core muscle nice and strong. You don't have to put your head down every time, you can leave it lifted. So you're basically doing little mini crunches for your left side and for your right side. So I'm gonna do some Russian twists over here and I keep my heels on the floor so I don't lose my balance and I lean as far back as I comfortably can and while I'm squeezing my stomach, I just turn side to side. The next move we're gonna do is called the hamstring curls. Uh, we're gonna lay on your belly and do your best to try to bring your heels to your back or your butt. You can do them one at a time, or if you want, you can do them both at the same time. There's different ways to do this and different variants. Um, the gravity alone is, is hard enough for me, even on my, my strongest leg. My right leg is not strong enough to go against gravity, so I lay on my side and I hold on to my hamstring so I can feel and make sure that the muscle is actually working and I squeeze my leg in. And after a couple of reps, I just roll over and do the other side. Next thing that I'm gonna do is gonna be called a deadlift or a low back extension. Um, whatever you wanna call it, it's kind of the same thing because we can't really deadlift, but we can always do low back extensions. Um, so I'll take these little 10 pound dumbbells. You can kind of pick whatever size you want or just grab something heavy from around the house. And what I'll do is I'll take it down all the way as low as I can go. And when I lift up, I'm using my low back to kind of straighten up. And I'll drop it back down. And I'm really just using my my lumbar low back. So I can do those the same, but I'm gonna show off a little bit and do something this guy can't do. And I'm gonna do some leg extensions. I hold the dumbbell straight up and I pinch it between with my feet and I extend my legs up. Now this could also work if you have uh, ankle weights or resistance bands or, or, or pretty much anything you can attach to make this more than just gravity. I can't really put the pinch between the legs, but I can, um, with at least this leg, I can kick out. And with this leg, not really, but maybe together, 
if I kind of like hooked my good leg underneath my bad leg, that might count. Not really, but you just gotta find what works for you. That's really the name of the game. You gotta figure out which individual muscle works, what's strong, what's weak, and just play. As an incomplete injury, hopefully, over time, improving. And, you know, obviously the goal is to get back to 100%, but the reality is, let's be, it's not probably gonna happen. But you can definitely have a, an improved quality of life with less pain, with more flexibility, with mobility, more freedom, and just general overall health. I always tell people to focus on the things you can do instead of the things you can't do, and you'll be able to find a wide variety of workouts that work best for you and your ability. An unfortunate reality of being an incomplete spinal cord injury is that we get a lot of criticism um, from people inside of the community. And unfortunately, it's a lot of uh, jealousy and resentment, but each individual disability has its own unique challenges. And one of the challenges that you and I deal with, there's a lot of complete injuries that don't feel pain at all. And sometimes I'm a little jealous of that, which is funny because they're jealous of the fact that I can stand and walk and load up my chair and you Have know, get a little get easier time getting dressed. Yeah, but in my head, I'm like, I would just like not to be incapacitated for multiple days out of the month. Like, I want to be able to sleep. You know, I want to be able to not have to take, you know, all this medicine. I, I want to be able to, to not have to feel like I'm being tased and electrocuted and lit on fire at the same time and like trying not to scream. I mean, your breath gets taken away. You literally unable to breathe. I mean, moments before we just stopped, started this, she was in the corner going, <clears throat> The lower your injury, the more likely you are to get pain and the more incomplete your injury, the more likely you are to get pain. I am a low incomplete injury, so I definitely get pain and it comes in with a fury. And the way my doctor explained it to me is my legs are confused, they're not getting the same signal that they used to get, so they're constantly sending the only signal they know, which is pain. They're sending it to my brain, and even if nothing is wrong, I'm getting pain 24-7. Yeah, I think that's the most frustrating point of it all, is it, it's a constant panic signal. Like, my legs are screaming to my brain, there's a problem down here, there's a big, huge, freaking problem. Sometimes I feel like there's a little, little dwarf that's running around behind me with a cattle prod that's just shocking me every eight seconds, you know? I feel like my legs are lit on fire, or I'm being stabbed endlessly with, with needles and knives, and it like, it literally like will take your breath away. It's jolting, it's like panicking, like you almost feel it in your heart. Like I can't move, if I get dressed, and like my leggings just pull up my leg it hurts so bad I have to like stop breathe catch my breath and pull it up a little bit more it's worse than the spinal cord injury sometimes yeah really and I think the biggest challenge of dealing with chronic pain is the fact that we've learned how to live our lives so gracefully and so peacefully because there is no other option the option is lay in bed and just medicate and like take care of yourself all day or live your life and I found that for me, living my life helps. By working out mm -hmm. helps, socializing mm -hmm. helps, running errands helps, just distracting myself. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for the most part, like just, just finding a way to like cope but still be happy. Other than fitness and exercise and nutrition, what are other ways that you've been able to cope with your nerve pain? I have found these drop foot boots that are super light, super small, not in the way, and they have helped me stretch my feet because whenever I have a lot of nerve pain, stretching my feet is what really helps my nerve pain just kind of calm down and helps me fall asleep. I drink a lot of bedtime tea and I knock the hell out when I drink that. And also like a little bit of medical marijuana, CBD during the day when I don't want to get high because I have a lot of different things to do, THC at night. So that way I can just fall asleep, it relaxes my muscles as I go to bed and I wake up with less pain the next day. And if I can do that, I'm happy. Fitness for me is a massive pain reliever like the fact that I like get my blood flowing that releases serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine and, and, it, and it helps with my digestive system and my urinary tract and and you know I find myself getting more and more and more pain attacks the less and less I do in the gym Me too. and the more intensity I have and the more I sweat the more I can make things happen you have a similar situation with me when you went from like a overweight depressed person to who you are now yeah. and I would imagine the depression and the overweight probably had to do with a lot of the pain. Yeah. And, and it's this weird catch 22 because it's like, I hurt too much to move, but moving is the only thing that's gonna make it better. Yeah, start small, move when you can, and it'll get better. The more consistent I am with working out and eating right, the kinder I am to my body, my body is kind to me. And you know, it just takes a little bit of extra work, but it's worth it. What was the thing that sparked you? To, like, what was your, your moment? Like, what was that thing that happened or the decision you made that helped you transform into who you are today? 
the fact that I was tired of being unhappy. I was tired of my depression. I was tired of feeling alone and lonely. So I decided to start working out and be a little bit more active because I realized I was a lot happier when I was with the team and we were performing and I started working out just a little bit, testing out new things, trying things, failed at a couple of things, succeeded at other things, had bad days where I could not move at all or even get dressed because of my nerve pain. But I just kept pushing through and trying and it really helped me out a lot. So one of the things that helped me in my personal journey is when I finally learned how to stop caring what other people thought about me. How were you able to just say, you know what, like, forget what they think about me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do my own thing. I started figuring out to not care what people think about me, honestly, earlier this year. I started going onto TikTok where there are a lot of bullies on there that were calling me a faker, that were calling me a vegetable, and just saying that I'm not a real wheelchair user. And that's when I just stopped caring and really just started tuning out other people because I know my truth. I can sleep easy at night knowing that I am aware of my diagnosis. I know I'm not faking it. I know of my bad days. I show the good days and I try to talk about the bad days so that way other people can relate and understand what the struggles are. But learning to not care takes a lot of work. I went to therapy in order to figure it out and I think some of the best people have gone into therapy and you should too if you struggle with how you think, how other people think about you. I think what is challenging specifically to people like you and I is that we constantly have to prove our disability to other people. Yes. There are so many different kinds of ambulatory wheelchairs. There really are. It is nuts. It's impressive. I had no idea. There's I, like, respiratory, I, there is uh, brittle bones, there is EDS, like stretchy skin. Chronic yeah. illnesses, I think you mentioned, there's yeah. like the POTS, the heart one. Yeah. Like, there's so many different types, Even, I had no idea. Uh, spinal cord injuries who have had the chance to recover eventually go back to using their chairs because the pain is too much for them to walk around. So there are thousands of reasons why people use a wheelchair and they're all valid. I get messages in my DMs all the time where people are like, you know, I always feel so guilty and I feel so bad and like I have one for the house but I'm afraid to take it out to the store because I live in a small town and like people are gonna judge me and yada yada and like I just tell them like, listen, like it's your life. Like it it's, it's your, it's your life, body, it's your pain. Matters. Exactly, like if, if you going to the store and grocery shopping and coming back home means that's the only thing you can do all day but if you were to take your wheelchair, that would be one of 10 things you could do that day. Just go, man, like get on your wheels and go. And I think a lot of the times, I know for me personally, dude, I used to, I told a story in my head about what other people thought about me, whether that's actually what they thought about me or not. So whenever I'd see people looking at me, I would decide what they were thinking based on what I thought they were thinking. Yes. Which was insane. Like I was trying to be a mind reader. Like someone would look at me, they could be like, oh dude, that guy's got a cool wheelchair. But in my head, I was thinking they were thinking, Oh man, look at that fake cripple loser. Why is he parking in the parking Go spot? There's therapy. old people that need that. Why don't you go to walk-in therapy? Getting over the fact of like, stop asking permission. The only permission you need is from yourself. Like as long as you know it's improving your life, do it. That's all that matters. The people who care about you aren't gonna care if you use a wheelchair full-time or part-time. The people who don't matter in your life are gonna have the biggest opinions. And since they don't matter, tune them out. And if you want to do a workout with Maria, she's actually going to be a part of the Rolets Experience Virtual. It is going to be happening October 10th and 11th. I will be doing a cardio class along with Sam who will be doing a stretching class. We are really excited for it. This weekend is full of women's empowerment with all disabilities, not just wheelchair users. We're going to have so many bonding experiences like our pajama party, dance classes, fitness classes, makeup seminars, and so many more amazing things. I'm really excited to get to know you. If you want to sign up before it's too late, link is in the description. So where can they find you online? You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Maria Rabino. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.